welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hey there, welcome to the Feed You podcast. I'm Elisa Connor, I'm your host, and I am so grateful you're here. We are at episode 46 and I'm so excited because episode 48 is only two episodes away and it is going to be a fun, super exciting episode. And I am really excited about that. So if you haven't tuned into social media, um, I am putting some teasers out there already about what's coming for episode 48. And you can find those over on Instagram at Elisa M. Connor or on Facebook. And my Facebook page is Elisa Connor Consulting, but there's also a page um, set up for the Feed You podcast. So if you just go and search Feed You podcast, you'll find it and um, you will see what's coming up for episode 48. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get into what we're talking about today. So this podcast, for those of you that may be tuning in for the first time, is all about how to perfect your sales funnel. And I give you inspiration, education, and information on growing your business with viable sales funnels. So today we are talking about nurturing. And I have taken a spin on the old Gary, it's not old, but Gary Vanderchuk. If you haven't heard of Gary Vanderchuk, um, he is a brilliant entrepreneur who loves to curse. So, (laughs) um, but he has his fourth book that I have read and I um, learned, I've learned a lot from him. So I don't appreciate his um, cursing as much as I appreciate his wisdom. So he, if you can get through the cursing, he's a great person to go and check out. Um, But one of his fourth book is titled jab 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 right hook and it really is the philosophy behind his business so i have converted that over to nurture 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 convert so tune into this this week's episode to to learn all about um, the similarities between those two and how you can utilize um, both mine and gary's and they're very similar um, analogy to get people into your sales funnel and turn them into leads But before we get started, a word from our sponsor. One of the biggest frustrations I hear from business owners on a regular basis is, I need more clients. And I get it. Every business struggles with getting new clients until you know how to do it. The problem is, is you spend your time networking and going to events and making phone calls that don't go anywhere. You're out trying to attract people to you when there is a much easier way. Growing your email list is so important because it fills your list with potential clients who actually want to hear from you. And it gives you the ability to reach out to them on a regular basis and share what you have to offer. To grow your email list, you have got to have a great free download. Sign up for our free newsletter isn't working anymore. You've got to create a download that piques their interest, gets them to take action, and adds them to your list. Sounds easy, right? Of course it's not easy. That's exactly why I created my new free training to help you create an awesome free download. You can sign up at elisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie. This live training is gonna present the five easy steps that I've used with my clients to help them go from hot mess marketing to growing an email list that they consistently get sales from. So you don't want to miss this training. Head on over to elisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie and sign up today. I'll see you inside. So let's get started. I'm so excited about this episode. Uh, A few years ago, I guess it's been about three years ago now, I actually got the opportunity to hear Gary Vaynerchuk speak. And I apologize, I'm probably not saying his name right, but just go with it. Um, but he and I didn't really know a whole lot about him other he was really um, just getting started building a following on social media and he was getting to be pretty well known but you know it was early in the days of promoting on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those different things and um, he was definitely one of the forerunners but I really didn't know a lot about his story and then when I heard um, heard his story and I'm not going to go into it too much right now but um, he basically took his 
family's wine business and moved it online. He was one of the forerunners in in the market to do that. Um, and just brilliant, brilliant marketer. Um, but I got to hear his story. I went to a, um, a conference and he was one of the keynote speakers. And so I started to, to study what, what he does and how he does it. And um, at that time, this book that I'm referencing, um, Jab, 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 Right Hook, was coming out. And it was his fourth book. And I think, if I remember right, I actually think we got a copy of this book when we went to um, the conference. And so I, I kept in the back of my mind the... Um, philosophy behind this book. So I'm going to share that with you right now. Um, basically, Gary will say you got to throw some jabs before you throw a right hook. And the jab, 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 right hook method is that those jabs are the value that you're providing to your audience and to your prospects and to your clients. And I talk about value on this podcast all the time. Well, um, you've got to provide value, provide value, provide value. And then the hook is you can ask them for the sale. But if you just jump in and you're trying to do like a first date, hey, you want to get married kind of thing, you're not going to have any traction with them. And so I wanted to come on and talk to you about how to nurture people through your sales funnel. And so I've changed his jab, 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 right hook to nurture, 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 convert. And it works the same way. Um, but I wanted to give you some specific ways that you could actually do some nurturing. But before we get started, you know me, I'm a stickler for um, statistics and I really um, like to do a little bit of homework just so you know I'm not pulling this stuff out of my um, ear and hoping that, you know, hoping and praying that you guys are going to believe me. So um, just some general sales funnel statistics, 70% of leads, actually 79% of leads um, that you get from your online marketing will never convert into sales. And that comes from Salesforce. So that's a lot. That's, you know, 80%, almost 80% um, of people that interact with you online are never going to become a lead. However, there are some things that we can do to move them through um, the sales funnel. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit. If you go back to some of my episodes about story, and I believe they're episodes starting with episode 40 through 42, all about story and story brand. Um some of the reasons that people don't purchase is one, you haven't earned the right to ask them to purchase from you yet. You're just trying to throw um, your product and service at them too soon. Um, and these are not you specifically, but this is in general why um, people don't purchase at the beginning of your funnel. Uh, the other thing is, is that people just don't ask. They don't ask for the sale. They don't ever put it out there. I have been guilty of this and I'm getting better at it. So I'm pretty proud of myself um, because I think, you know, we're ashamed to ask for money. We're ashamed to ask it paid for what we're brilliant at. And so um, there's definitely some speed bumps along the road of people entering into your funnel and then ne never moving forward to purchase. So if you want more on those, go check out those other episodes. I'll link to them in the show notes. And... Uh, so let's go on to episode number, or not episode, to uh, statistic number two. So statistic number two is 70% of shoppers make buying decisions based on specific needs or pain points being met. And that comes from impact communication. So this is why I harp on you figuring out what your clients need and what your prospects need. Because if you aren't addressing their pain point, they're not going to 70% of them aren't going to buy. So you may get a 30% that just come in and buy because, you know, you're, you're giving them some ideas. Um, but if you're not solving a particular pain point, you're losing out on 70% of the market. So um, you can see how on your sales funnel, it's dwindling down because you've got, you know, you're getting attention, you've got the attention phase, which is phase one. Um, and that's your leads. But if you have 80% of those that aren't even moving forward, well, then you're down to 20%. Well, 70% of that 20%, if you're not solving their pain point, they're out of there. So you're down now to, I, I can't do math that well, but if you ha um, are not fully aware of the sales funnel, I actually have a really great freebie right now on my website that you can go to. Um, that is alisaconnor.com forward slash SSFG. And that stands for um, sales, simple sales funnel guide. Um, so SSFG, and I'll link to it in the show notes so you can get to it. But it gives you some great pointers on how to get started with your sales funnel. Um, and so as I'm walking through this, you may want to go grab that and, and print it out. But 
if you have 70% of those shoppers that are looking for you to solve their problem and you're not, they're out of there. So you can see that you're um, statistically, you're fighting a, a losing battle if you aren't handling um, problems right up front. Now this is really awesome because this is directly in your sales funnel piece that personalized email marketing can increase conversion by 10% or more. And that comes from the Aberdy group. And um, I actually read a statistic from them that it not only will personalized email um, get you get people to purchase more, but the click through rate increases dramatically. It's like um, 30 or 40% more click rate if you're personalizing those emails. So we, we went through a lot of that um, personalization um, suggestions and ideas in the last two episodes. So if you're looking on ways, looking at ways to personalize um, your customer experience, go back and listen to those two episodes. And that would be episodes 44 and 45. So specifically 44. It's a great, that's a great episode that you can go and get some ideas on how you can um, personalize that, that buyer's journey and specifically in your email marketing. And then the last statistic is leads nurtured by a sales funnel. So we're creating sales funnels here, spend nearly 50% more than those that are not nurtured. That comes from the, I'm going to butcher this, the Anuit, <laughs> oh boy, Anuitas group. Um, and that's pretty significant. So if you can get your customers to spend you know, 50% more on products, we're looking at lifetime value. And we've talked a little bit about lifetime value on this podcast before, but you're not looking for those people that are making a one-time purchase. What you're wanting to do is get them to purchase with you, create a relationship and continue to buy from you. So that's what you're doing with a nurture series and with nurturing your clients in all these different ways. Um, so let's dig into it. Let's dig into how, how we can begin the nurture process. And so if you're looking at whether you're looking at my process or Gary Vee's, it's going to be the same thing. You need to create and approach and promote really good content. Um, things that your ideal customer and your, um, prospects are looking for there. You know, it's, it's a piece of contact that gives them a quick win that gets them, you know, excited about what else they can learn from you. And, um, that is where you start the attraction phase. So you can deliver, um, information that people actually care about. You can talk about their problem because the more you talk about their problem, the bigger the pain gets and the more they want to know how to solve it. Um, you can touch on all the different learning styles that people have. And I think this is something that people forget about. Not everyone learns the same way, which is why when I create a podcast, I also create show notes. Um, and I create little videos to go with it too on social media because everyone is learns and absorbs information in different ways. And sometimes it's multiple ways. So, um, when you are able to touch on all those different learning styles, you know, whether it's video or audio or written, um, you can attract more people into your circle, which is what you're wanting to do at the beginning phase of the sales funnel. And you can also touch on all of the different indicators that would make them interested in moving forward with you. So there's a, emo- you know, you're touching on their emotions. Um, you're touching on people who just want to, um, do a quick read and maybe grab the basics and then they'll come back and learn some more. You're, you know, there's people that want to be entertained. Um, and then there's people that, you know, want all the details. So if you're putting out different pieces of content that hit, you know, the emotional piece, um, the quick read, the entertainment area and the detailer, you're starting to build a relationship and you're, tr- you're starting to attract people in the way that they like to be, um, nurtured and taken care of. So if you're just doing one thing, because that's what you like to do, that may not be the best way to attract your people. So, um, think about that when you're creating content and what you're delivering in your content and how you're delivering it. So that's number one, you know, um, a a side note on that is that when you're creating that content and you'll see it a lot of times in this podcast that you will create a giveaway to further the relationship. And so a lot of times when I do a training, I will have what's called a content upgrade and I will offer a link to some free download. Well, that does two things. One, it starts building my email list and two, it helps me, um, 
further the relationship with that person so that, you know, I can learn more about what they, what they are interested in, what problems they're having, um, things that they need help with. And then I can continue to nurture them and move them through my sales funnel so that when I'm ready to, um, launch a new program or introduce them to a long-term solution, they are a warmed up audience and they're much more open to receive it. And then, um, to take that a step further, if you actually personalize those engagements, like we have been talking about in the in the last two episodes, and making it really pertinent to what they want to learn, because you know, there's several things in my business I talk about, I talk about websites, I talk about um, the email nurture series, and I talk about social media, and, and there's lots of little chunks there. And so somebody may already have a website, and they think it's great and it's working for them, but they don't have uh, an email nurture series set up or they don't have a sales, an actual sales funnel set up. So they're gonna tune into that. So if I'm delivering specific course content to them saying, okay, this is how you set your email nurture series up and they're interested in email, they're gonna be like, oh, this is awesome. Where have you been all my life? And I know you've had that experience with other people that you look up to and other, um, you know, whether it's for business or personal, if you have somebody that's ready to take your hand and walk you through that journey side by side, they're building a relationship. You know that they're not in it just for a quick sale and they're in it for the long term. So think about how you can implement that in your own business. And then um, the next I- irony, <laughs> the next way to nurture people after you've already grabbed their attention is to send them through um, a nurture series. And a lot of times, like if you go through my nurture series, I start with asking questions like, what do you want to learn about the most? Where are you stuck? And then delivering specific content to those people based on their answer. And that's all stuff that you can set up and, um, enable and will enable you to personalize the content that you share to them and also personalize what you want to sell to them. Because I think we lose track of like, we have this idea for a product in our head, but it may not be a product that anybody wants. And if nobody wants it, guess what? Your cash register is not ringing. So this um, nurture series and the way that you can, you know, really get people's interests um, gathered via your email nurture series is really a, it's invaluable because you can then take that knowledge, that information and create specific solutions to what they need solved in a, in a paid, in a paid fashion, whether that's a course or it's consulting or whatever it is, you're going to, the same problems will continue to come up if you know who your target market is or your niche. Um, and you will start to identify those. And then it makes it really easy for you to either, um, recalibrate your current offerings to solve those specific problems or create new offerings to do that. And then people are lined up to, you've already prepped them. You've already given them the, you know, the freebies, got them some free, um, some quick wins and started, you know, loving on them a little bit with your email series and your broadcasts. And by the time that you've enunciated that pain again and again and again, they are ready and primed to purchase from you. And when you pop that solution in there that's solving that specific problem, they're like, yes, please sign me up. Here's my credit card. So that's a great way to build your list and um, create that customer journey and experience so that they want to, you know, build a relationship with you and vice versa. So another way to build your relationship, I think we get in this um, content hamster wheel a lot of times, like we always have to be creating new content, new content. And I'm actually doing this um, as I'm recording this tomorrow, I'm getting on an airplane to go recharge in Oregon. Um, One of my favorite places is the Oregon coast and I'm gonna go recharge and I'm gonna reevaluate all the content that I've been creating for the last almost year and um, see what I can, you know, revamp what I can, um, reference in future episodes, things that went over well with the audience, um, things that people really liked. And, you know, can I do a newer version or can I expand on that version? And so really looking at what you've already created, how it went over with your audience, and then either tweaking it or adding to it or going in a little deeper on that content is a great way to save you time, save you energy, and um, really show your expertise. I think that's another thing that we as entrepreneurs 
um, are not necessarily good at in small business owners. You know, we're not really good at saying, hey, this is our, this is, we're really good at this and this is why. Um, you know, we may say it once, but you know, as Donald Miller, who's one of my um, other mentors will say, marketing is a an exercise in memorization. And that really has stuck with me and I hope it will stick with you as well. Because if you aren't teaching people to remember what you do by telling them again and again and again why you're an expert, then um, they are going to be hit by, um, you know, what am I trying to say? Um, ADD (laughs) syndrome, you know, there's somebody else that's going to get their attention. And they're they're going to forget all about you. They're going to forget what you do. They're going to forget how you can help them. And so nurturing that relationship and continuing to tell them, you know, your experiences, the results you've gotten for other people and the um, way that you're different and the way that you can help them is going to keep you top of mind so that even if they're not ready right now and they're just doing, you know, research and they're in the interest area and they're not ready to make a decision, Um, but you keep them, keep yourself top of mind with them when they're ready to reach that decision, they're ready to take a jump, um, and do it, then you're going to be the person they remember. And it kind of reminds, reminds me, my aunt, um, is getting ready to, she's getting her, she's talking herself into, um, getting ready to sell her home. And this is a home, gosh, she's been in it for probably 50 years. And, um, it, so there's a lot of memories there. There's a lot of emotion there. And so, you know, when you are going through all of that, you're going through decisions of, you know, things you want to keep, things you want to get rid of. And, but it takes a long time to talk yourself into that. And so watching her go through this, she's like, she's kind of aware that she's getting older and she's, you know, probably needs to move. She has a lot of stairs in her house. It's a lot to keep up. She has a huge yard. And so there's an awareness there. So now she's at the interest slash research um, part of this decision. And so she's looking at, you know, okay, so do I want to rent? I'm not really ready to go into a um, assisted living or anything like that, but maybe a 55 and older community, or do I want a house? Um, so she's doing a lot of research and, you know, we're, we're going to look at different townhouses and patio homes and Um, just really kind of figuring out what's going to be the best solution for her. You know, what part of town? Most of um, our family lives on the north side of town. She's on the far south side of town. So every time she drives, it's an hour back and forth. And so in an ideal world, she would move closer um, to the north part of town. But that's also really difficult because her she's been on the south side of town for 50 plus years, you know, or 50 some odd years. So she's got friends, she's got a grocery store. And so all of these things have to go into um, a decision making. And so if you can apply that to your clients and you're, you know, they're, they're becoming aware that they have a problem and then they start um, researching, you know, okay, is this really a problem? Are other people having this problem? How are they solving this problem? And they're doing research about all the other um, people that solve that problem for them, like you would. And then you have to put a differentiator in there um, to bring their attention back to you when they're ready to make a decision and move into um, actually purchasing. And that differentiator can be nurturing, whether you're doing it through content, you're doing it through email, you're doing it through, um, you know, surveys or Facebook lives, however you want to do it. Um, but as long as you continue to nurture, nurture, nurture that when they're ready to make that purchase, ready to, you know, sign on the dotted line, they're going to remember you. And so that really is, um, the point of this episode is to, to get you thinking about, you know, how do you create, um, in your business? Number one, how do you create attention? How do you create awareness of who you are and why you're an expert to every prospect out there? And then, you know, how can you then nurture them through um, the research phase, the interest phase, um, and then, you know, nurture them more by showing them a quick win and a quick um, solution. And then just, you know, being there to answer their questions, being there to offer products and solutions that answer their biggest pain points, automatically, they're going to move into um, making a purchase with you 
when they're ready. Now that may not be instantly because it, may, it takes people time to go through this, just like it's taking my aunt some time to go through making the decision of purchasing a house. But when she gets to that point, she's going to remember the people that have um, given her information, the people that you know did a little bit more hand holding, that answered her questions, all of those different things versus just somebody that is like, hey, why don't you buy a house here? Um, because people people want that hand holding, they want that relationship. So that's what I've got for you today. It was a quick episode, but I wanted to um, give you some insight on some ways that you can, you know, move people through your sales funnel and nurture them a little bit more. And if you, I will link to Gary Vanderchuk's book in there. Um, it really is a good read if you are um, wanting to you know, dig a little bit deeper into how to create content. He's a social media genius, mostly. Um, So follow him on social media if you want to. Um, Come and leave your questions for me over on Instagram. If you, you know, if this has been a good episode, you want to know more, you want some more in-depth ideas or solutions on how to set that up, um, come and find me. I, you can send me a direct message on Instagram. I check into those every day and will um, respond right back. I love to do direct messages on Instagram. You can find me at Elisa M. Connor. And if you've enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to share it with a friend. Uh, Let them know, you know, what we're talking about and um, how it could impact them in their business and um, what's coming up. So the next episode is actually an interview. It's going to be a really great interview um, with my with my friend Carrie Borcherding. And she is talking all about combining your passion and your profits. And it's a really good episode. I'm excited to bring that to you moving a little bit more into the woo-woo again. And then episode 48 is coming up and it's gonna be so cool. I'm so excited about it. So until then, I will, uh, you'll hear from me in a couple weeks. Next week's an interview. So uh, I look forward to seeing you then. And in the meantime, enjoy your summer. And um, I hope that you keep converting and nurturing those customers. Take care. Just a reminder, don't forget to sign up for my free training to create your irresistible download. Everybody wants a great free download. Why shouldn't you have one too? Grow and build your email list so you can get more clients by joining me on my free training at alisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie. I'll see you soon.